Welcome back. You're watching 101. We're speaking with Grandmaster Jun Ri, known as the father of American Taekwondo. You had uh, an interesting life in America once you uh, made Taekwondo popular. You became friends with Bruce Lee. You mentioned uh, Bruce Lee. Yes, uh, I met him in 1964, one of the championships in Los Angeles, and we became uh, friends instantaneously. And uh, soon, when he come to my house, my house is his house. When I go to L.A., I stay at his house. And so we exchanged more or less. I taught him how to kick, you know, Kung Fu didn't kick like Taekwondo. But uh, I learned how to punch more properly from him. So we exchanged ideas. So we are teachers each other and students each other. Did you ever spar with each other? Oh, yes. Yeah. How, how did you regard Bruce Lee as a character? Well, he is very philosophical, very jovial. I mean, he makes people laugh all the time. And uh, he really has unique uh, character and ability uh, to become what he is. And in fact, uh, when he wrote uh, that I am going to, next three years, I'm going to make $10 million in my hand. And he wrote that, you know, a promise to himself in front of me. And so uh, he is very disciplined. And uh, he's not very easy to make a friendship, a very tough. But once he trusts you, he will give uh, anything that, uh, that he can give. Very tragic life, it seems. Oh, yeah. Not only him, but his son, 20 years later, died in the same way, just like he did. Uh -huh. and people, a lot of people suspected there was something uh, underhand, that he was assassinated and so on. Yeah, uh, so nobody knows for sure uh, what's the truth. It's so strange. He was very, very happy, jovial, healthy young man. Then next day, so I suspect somebody did something to him. You made your first movie in 1973, When Taekwondo Strikes. How was that experience? Well, you know, I never played even high school drama, and so it was really shocking that I had to play a main, you know, movie, in the international movie, main role, and, and I, I did, uh, did try my best, but uh, I didn't like myself acting in there. <laughs> Do you find yourself uh, being called to choreograph movies, though? Because that's very popular now. Martial arts movies in, in uh, martial arts choreography is very popular. Yes, and uh, in fact, uh, I, was, I was the first one to really introduce musical form in, in martial art. You know, all my colleagues call me, you know, martial art witch, because they didn't believe in that. Now, today, everybody's doing it. And so I, I love martial art ballet. I uh, choreographed to Beethoven Fifth Symphony, Exodus, and uh, all the national anthems of different countries that I'm teaching. Well, what I'm trying to really uh, introduce is that we can create a society where everybody can trust everybody instead of uh, hating uh, everybody, each other. I will ask you more about your goal with that uh, in a moment. You also became friends with Muhammad Ali, the legendary boxer. Yes. Uh, when he uh, announced a fight against a Japanese wrestler, and uh, one of my friends uh, introduced me to Muhammad Ali, that I was the best one to teach him how to block when he kick. And so uh, I went to Deer Lake uh, training camp here in, in Pennsylvania. And so I trained about a year and a half before the fight. So we became very good friends. And uh, I also showed how to punch in his boxing uh, championship. And in England, 1975, when he defended his title against Richard Dunn, he knocked him out in minute, first minute and a half, and first round. And then he said, what kind of punch is that? And he, is that an ankle, ankle punch? No, that's not ankle, but that's Master June Lee's acupunch, right after the fight, mm. that he said that I got a lot of, lot of publicity from that fight. So then I went, I went to Japan as his coach for the wrestler, uh, the, uh, the Antonio Inoki versus the Muhammad Ali fight. And after that, Antonio Inoki became my best friend also. You, you were known very well in the Washington area for television commercials that featured uh, jingle music composed by Niels Lof Lofgren. That's right. And you had uh, the catchphrase, nobody bothers me. Mm -hmm. And, and it, was a, it was a huge success. It was, I mean, yes. you really must have been the first to really promote martial arts on a TV commercial. That's right. Uh, 1967, we started. No, 1969, we started until 1980. Uh, that time, we had only five stations, Channel 4, 5, 7, 9, and the UHF Channel 20. And uh, last five years, I put it one spot a day in every station. So everybody knew that our commercial, my school. Uh -huh. 
And it was a feature the little boy who was your son. Yes, and nobody bothers me, and uh, that's m my daughter. Then my son said, nobody bothers me either, and then wink like this. <laughs> and uh, they are now 40s, uh, 41 and 40. Uh, yeah, that's, it's been that long. I cannot believe time flies so fast. Where did you get that commercial savvy to use television advertising, to use uh, leaflets and, and going around door to door promoting Taekwondo? It's, a very, it's unusual, it's very enterprising. Well, uh, in fact, uh, I, you know, when, when a lot of people thought I, I, I paid thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to make that commercial, it, it, it cost me only about $300. How? Uh, I had a student who was a, a Channel 9, you know, filmmaker, and so he, he said, I want to make a, a commercial for you. And then I got the idea, nobody bothers me, I did, I did. And so that became household word, and uh, we won best commercial in, in, the, in the metropolitan area one year uh, award. Uh -huh. now, it wasn't until 2007 that you were inducted into the Taekwondo Hall of Fame where you're listed as the pioneer of American Taekwondo and the pioneer of Taekwondo in Russia. Yes. How did you get involved with Russia? Well, uh, when I went in 1989, the, all martial arts prohibited by the government. Only KGB t uh, learned it. And so uh, because my uh, students from uh, Soviet embassy, uh, they got a good grade, and, and so he introduced me to sports uh, minister in 1989. I, I went to talk to him and talked him into that how in you know, a positive thing for children. And then 24, no, no, 48 hours later, I talked to him uh, December 22, December 24, he announced we legalize all martial arts. So I'm the one who really made that happen. That's how I have 65 schools. You've taught so many important people in Washington, D.C. As you say, congressmen, uh, senior leaders, decision makers. How do they respond to uh, what you teach them? Why do they come for this? Well, uh, 1965, uh, James Cleveland from New Hampshire, you know, Congress, he died now, he, uh, he was mugged. It was a big article in Washington Post front page. I called them that moment when I saw that, and then I said, I started the Taekwondo school. If you take my lesson, you will be never be mugged again. He was very interested, and I, yeah, I like to learn, so uh, can you come to uh, uh, Congress and teach? I will gather a few congressmen. And sure enough, he, he gathered uh, about four other uh, congressmen, and we had a big meeting. When I went there, I brought the uniform and each proper size for the four, five people. And then he called the Washington Post, he called the Look Magazine, Time Magazine, and uh, Life Magazine, and all the magazines were there. And so I got a lot of publicity from there, and I never, I knew that this is very valuable class to have, so I never let it go. I just devoted myself to, you know, even I am teaching even. We, we taught this morning also. Any, uh, any presidents, former presidents, have come under your uh, eagle eye? Uh, well, uh, uh, George Bush uh, Sr., he, he likes what I'm doing, but he didn't take any lesson. But Newt Gingrich, uh, Bob Livingston is a black belt, Tom Foley is a black belt, and uh, uh, Jesse Jackson Jr. is my black belt, and uh, uh, Jesse Jackson's son. So uh, also, uh, I read in the Korean newspaper that Obama took Taekwondo for five years. So uh, chances are that he might know me through the magazine. What are your goals now in life? I know you've written a book called Trutopia. Tell me about that. One day I said, uh, you know, I always say we can achieve as far as our thought can reach. But then I was not really practicing that. Then one, one day I said, what would be the biggest you know, thought I could conceive? I said, buying the whole globe with my money. Then I said, that's going to be a lot of headache. <laughs> then what is the next best, you know, big goal could be? I said, making everybody happy with every breath of life. You know, to do that, we have to really uh, create a new society that the original uh, design of a human society by God, that is, where everybody love one another, instead of everybody really hate each other right now. And so the uh, only, only way to do that is to really education. Master Junri, how would you like to be remembered? What would you like your legacy to be? Well, i like to remember who produced Utop Trutopian society.
one with truth and the idea. Yeah, true utopia. So you want to really change the world? Oh, I, 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 I know it's going to happen. It's not going to happen in my lifetime. But I see, I have created, a, you know, 1001 Club. This is uh, the, the 1001 Club has two meanings. One is 100 years of wisdom in a body of 21. When I'm 100 years old, I want to function like a 21-year-old boy. Second meaning is the more deep, that in 21st century, 100 years of 21st century, we will make Trutopia reality. Master Junri, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.